All right, let's continue talking about the social self. And this time, let's focus on the role of autobiographical memories and how the self-concept is formed. Autobiographical memories are memories about yourself and your life. And with no memory, there is no self. If I were to ask you, who are you? I guarantee you, you would consult your memories. You would think to yourself, well, who have I been? And the things that would come to your mind first are recent events. They really dominate our current sense of self. We think about, you know, like, what have I done for myself lately? What have I done for the world lately? What have I done for my family lately? All those thoughts and memories come to mind. And they influence how we view ourselves and how other people view us, of course. There are, though, some interesting uh, differences when it comes to people. Older folks, for example, tend to look back quite a bit. And we have what's known as a reminiscence effect. And um, that makes sense because when you think about their earlier years, they were going through a lot of change and, and really determining who they were going to become in this world. Were they going to be parents? Were they going to be successful business people? Were they going to be athletes? All these interesting things were going on in their lives. So it's a very busy time and a very formative time. So oftentimes when older people think about who they are, they're thinking back about times when they were younger. There's another interesting effect that doesn't include necessarily recent thoughts, and that's transitional times, uh, particularly first times that you did something. So you're a college student now, but I guarantee you later on in life, you're going to think about your first weeks in college. You're going to think about your first college class. You're going to think about maybe the first time you had to do some type of oral report. You're going to think about maybe the first time that you started work or the, the first time you went out on a date with your spouse, something like that. You're going to think a lot about these, these big changes that occurred in your life and those first days, first hours, whatever it might be that they occurred. So transitions, again, they, they represent a very life-defining time of our lives. Flashbulb memories are also another interesting um, type of memory that influences who we are, and they're not necessarily recent. So flashbulb memories are memories that are en enduring. They are very detailed, and they tend to be of dramatic events that occurred in our lives, and they essentially become imprinted, and they become self-defining. So you'll talk to older people who remember when John Kennedy was shot. And that's always used as a great example because it's something that affected so many people. And all the people who lived through that can tell you exactly where they were and what they were doing at that time. Now, I was not alive at that time, and I assume many of you were not as well. So you have other flashbulb memories that somewhat define who you are. One for me would be the uh, Challenger shuttle explosion. I was a high school junior or maybe senior at the time. I can't recall. But I do remember being in the hall at my locker, and there was an announcement on uh, the PA system saying that this happened, and people were reacting in a variety of, of different ways. But I remember just thinking, how can that happen to America? You know, I, I remember just growing up thinking, you know, like America's the best and we do everything the best. And how can we have something like this happen? And I realized that we're vulnerable. We're people in America, too. It, my point is, it was life changing for me. And for people of my generation who are of a particular age at that time, it really influences how they started living their lives. Now, the same thing is true. I would assume most people who are listening to this video were alive uh, and and thinking, you know, interesting thoughts during 9-11. Because, of course, if you were a child, this could have happened and you might not have really understood what happened. But if you were understanding what was happening at this time, this is very life-defining. It's one of these flashbulb memories because, again, it uh, to some extent defines who you are because everything changed at that point. It was at that point that we realized the world was somewhat unstable and somewhat unsafe. So that's what flashbulb memories are all about. So the three things I just talked about are different types of memories or patterns of memories that very much influence who we are. And they're not recent memories. Recent memories do dominate, but not all the memories that dominate who we are are recent memories. Now, autobiographical memories are really neat because they allow us to link together what happened in the past and what's happening now and, and even what we think is going to happen in the future. So 
It's the memories that we have that allow us to have this continuous sense of self. But you need to keep this in mind as well. Not all the memories that we have are accurate. So uh, here's a, a memory that I have catching a fish in Alaska. And I tell you, when I think about this, and when I tell the story to others, it seems like that fish keeps getting bigger and bigger. And I have to look at this picture to remind myself of what really happened. And just like we have fish stories, actual fish stories, we also somewhat look in our past and we exaggerate just like we exaggerate fish stories. And we're motivated to do that. We're motivated to inflate uh, our history because we need to have, you know, this personal sense of importance and achievement. And if we didn't have that, that could really harm our self-esteem. I mean, a boring life would really harm our self-esteem. So you see how we're motivated to look back with these rose-colored glasses. We're motivated to look back and see things a little bit more positively than maybe they really were. There's interesting research to back this up. Let me just give you one quick example. In this situation, college students were asked to think back about high school and recall some of their grades. And that wasn't that long ago for most of these students. Plus, the people who were running the study, they had access to their actual transcripts. So they were able to determine how accurate the students were in recalling their previous grades. Now, when people did really well, they earned an A, like particularly in a, in a specific class. They usually were pretty accurate, but you're going to see as these grades get lower, like let's say um, you earned a B in a particular class, people don't recall that quite as well. People don't recall C's quite as well. And people are not recalling their D's, their, their bad times, their bad performances, nearly as well as their good performances. So there's a clear bias. There was a bias toward grade inflation. So it's not just that people had bad memories. It's that people had memories that were very much influenced in one direction, and they were being exaggerated to make them look better. All right. So what we're learning there is that memories very much do influence who we are today. But as we consult past memories, we often revise them to help inflate our current sense of self and to help put it in perspective with the way we currently see ourselves. All right, well, that's it for this section, but stay tuned because there's more social psychology coming up soon. Thank you.